Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Guide My Career. This is Sira from Department of Meteorology and Oceanography, Andhra University. Uh, this is our second video on what the structure of the atmosphere. In our first video, we saw only about one layer of the what the structure of atmosphere that is uh, troposphere and what is the troposphere, what can we see tropo in, in troposphere and tropopause. Everything we studied about uh, troposphere in our first video. Okay. <coughs> so, so, this is the time to know about. Uh, uh, rest of the layers in vertical structure of the atmosphere. So first we will see what is the second layer in uh, vertical structure of atmosphere, that uh, stratosphere. So you can see a stratosphere in a figure as a side, as a highlighted. Uh, the height of this stratosphere is 50 kilometers. Even in this layer also, the major gases are uh, nitrogen and oxygen. In coming to the third point, increasing temperature with increasing height. You can see uh, temperature criteria in a stratosphere as a different from increasing with increasing height. For this, a reason is presence of ozone in this particular layer. So, if the ozone is present in this particular layer, what does actually do? What does it actually do? Because ozone is a something a gas which is made by the combination of two oxygen atoms. So, what's actually doing is it's absorbing the highly dangerous ultraviolet radiation, um, protecting us from the dangerous ultraviolet radiation without falling on the ground. Okay, and if you see the temperature profile, you can see uh, it follows uh, up to some extent as isothermal and then starts increasing temperature with increasing height. Isothermal means uh, the same temperature, iso means same thermal as temperature. If it, uh, the temperature, for, temperature profile follows constant temperature, then it comes under the isothermal. It means uh, uh, from the starting of the stratosphere, it follows uh, isothermal. Uh, isothermal process up to some extent and then starts raising means starts increasing temperature with increasing height so you can see very clearly in this uh, side and uh, another one presence of ozone forms the ozonosphere because of the presence of uh, ozone in this particular layer we can also call it as uh, ozonosphere and uh, you can see some clouds in this uh, stratosphere those are called as a uh, uh, upper stratospheric nacreous clouds. You can see in the bottom of the slide as uh, clouds which are in very color, different different colors and uh, temperature range is in this uh, stratosphere is minus 60 degrees to 0 degrees means minus 2 or negative 2 positive means uh, indicating as uh, uh, rising and the pressure range in this is 200 mb to 1 mb, 1 MB. Uh, as I told you in a previous video why the temperature means why the pressure is decreasing from the ground to uh, or the key, uh, height uh, from ground to uh, uh, each layer uh, why the pressure is decreasing from ground to troposphere stratosphere why is it so i explained because uh, if you go from the ground to the kilometer two kilometer three kilometer means if you go higher the pressure will be decreased because of the concentration of the gases which are present in atmosphere in each layer uh, also get decreased then automatically there is no pressure to exert an atmosphere means if there is no gas to exert a pressure in a layer then automatically you have no uh, pressure in that particular layer there is a reason okay and uh, second the other one is the strat of previous video uh, stratophysis is nothing but the ending of the stratosphere uh, you can see uh, in the stratosphere uh, you can see jet aircrafts and uh, temperatures in this layer are not are not much lower than at sea level and third one is the mesosphere so it's named because of the presence of meteors in this layer you can see in a uh, slide as a bottom uh, bottom of the slide you can see a meteor which is falling under the sky condition night condition you can see very clearly so because of the meteors uh, in the presence in this layer meteors are nothing but the falling bodies which we can see in a sky under the night conditions uh, very clearly <coughs> because of the presence of uh, these meteors in this particular layer uh, we call it as a mesosphere and height of this uh, mesosphere is 80 kilometers uh, and in this layer the temperature criteria is almost same as uh, again a troposphere so in this troposphere uh, what happened what happened in this troposphere temperature decreasing with increasing height similarly in this uh, a mesosphere also temperature starts decreasing with increasing height okay but in this layer the reason for this is 
presence of the much gases to absorb the solar energy in this layer is very less means uh, in mesosphere there are no much gases to absorb the solar energy and keep this layer as a warm is very less okay that's why uh, it becoming as a coldest uh, sphere or layer in this atmosphere you, in this layer only you can see uh, coldest temperatures throughout the whole vertical structure of the atmosphere okay and uh, uh, this is uh, too high for the balloon operations as well as a uh, too low for the satellites to orbit means we can't send any satellite to orbit in this layer as well as we can't conduct any balloon operations in this layer okay and uh, uh, rockets and meteors uh, we can see uh, i told you just now and temperature range of this layer is minus 0 degrees to minus 80 degrees centigrade and uh, pressure range is 1 mb to 0 0.1 mb and mesophores as i discussed uh, this ending of the mesosphere and lowest temperature in atmosphere is minus 95 degrees centigrade okay means <coughs> i can see uh, uh, lowest temperature in the whole atmospheric vertical structure of the atmosphere in mesophores but mostly as uh, somebody asks you in which layer you can see that lowest temperature you might say a mesosphere but if uh, want uh, no pinpoint where exactly it is it might be in mesospheres okay and this is all about the mesosphere coming to the next layer that's uh, thermosphere thermo means something related to very hot uh, term heat and sphere means which i explained why do we call uh, every layer as a sphere sphere because they are all uh, these all uh, or layers uh, which are in the form of uh, sphere because which are all enveloping the earth which is in shape of sphere that's why we call i explained in before uh, height of the thermosphere is uh, 80 to 500 kilometer and uh, which is the hottest sphere in atmosphere just now i told the coldest sphere in the atmosphere that's a mesosphere similarly it's a reverse for that uh, hottest sphere or layer in this atmosphere here also uh, first isothermal means if you see uh, the vertical uh, profile of the temperature in this uh, particular layer it's quite uh, similar to the stratosphere means it's uh, first it start uh, first uh, up to some extent uh, it's it's following the isothermal criteria and then starts increasing temperature with increasing height but for this uh, increasing temperature with increasing height the reason is absorption of extreme uv radiation by molecules of atomic molecules and atomic oxygen but in case of stratosphere absorption of uv radiation by the ozone but in case of thermosphere absorption of ex not absorption extreme absorption not only absorption extreme absorption of uh, uv radiation by molecules and atomic oxygen that's why you can get higher temperatures in this layer only okay and you can see uh, iss international space station in this layer only and uh, something which is uh, very interesting that uh, we can also call it as uh, ionosphere because it's a ionosphere is also part of this thermosphere and it's formed by the action of solar radiation and gases like uh, nitrogen and oxygen the action of solar radiation is what uh, ionization because it's the region where we can see ions and free electrons because of the presence of ions and free electrons we can uh, uh, the, see the process of ionization <coughs> that's why we are calling it as ionosphere okay knowledge of this comes from the ionosomes like uh, these are uh, we, we can get this uh, information about this uh, particular ionosphere by uh, from the ionosomes, uh, ionosomes just like uh, ground based radars. From this, we can get the information of ionosphere. And uh, auroras, we can see auroras means uh, some uh, huge light, uh, extreme light uh, we can see in uh, atmosphere, particularly in this layer. Those are called as uh, auroras. Uh, those visible in this uh, layer only, if they form in uh, Northern hemisphere, those will be called as aurora boreal. If they form in the southern hemisphere, those will be called as astrola, as, sorry, astre, aurora astralians. And uh, another interesting fact uh, to know as interest is uh, radio waves travel greater distance at night since they are reflected well by the ionosphere. This is what exactly is. Uh, what it is exactly uh, radio waves are nothing but the frequent uh, FM waves. It means we use it to be. Uh, daily we listen the FM but uh, we can get a nice signal uh, at night than the day why why is it so because radio waves are the um, 
responsible for the listening and uh, listening of FM only, right? So these radio waves travels greater distance when they deflected uh, uh, deflected well by the ionosphere. But in case of uh, night, in case of night, they will be reflected by the ionosphere as a well. But in case of day, they can't reflect. Uh, they can't reflect as a well by the ionosphere because of the traffic of the sunlight during the day. Okay, and uh, layers of the ionosphere uh, means uh, as part of. Uh, uh, scientific research in uh, ionosphere people they are uh, layered this ionosphere into different different layers like uh, D, E, Spodaki, Spodaki, E2, F1, F2 and Z in different different I am not going in detail about, in detail about each and every layer of the ionosphere uh, if you are interested uh, you might go um, and know about uh, all these layers as in detail and uh, coming to the next one exosphere the height of the exosphere uh, is uh, 500 to uh, extends from 500 to thousands of kilometers. It is the almost outer outermost layer of the atmosphere. You can see in an image. <laughs> and magnetosphere. Uh, in magnetosphere, this is one of the interesting uh, uh, thing to know in a vertical section of the atmosphere. I mean, uh, most of you would know would not know about this uh, magnetosphere because of this only we are getting we are getting the whole atmosphere which is enveloping the earth if there is no magnetosphere there is no atmosphere on the earth why is it so because if you see the image which i okay, which i uh, mentioned in this slide uh, that's clearly tells you <coughs> what magnetosphere is exactly because in this image you can see uh, the magnetosphere is being deflecting by the solar wind because of the solar wind the magnetos magnetic field of the earth being deflecting in a particular shape what i told you uh, teardrop shaped cavity around the earth so uh, what actually doing this magnetosphere is it uh, uh, keeping the whole atmosphere which surrounded the earth without moving away from the earth without escaping the atmosphere from the earth it's keeping means it's just like acting as a guard okay so that's that's how uh, the magnetosphere is important to keep uh, atmosphere uh, which is surrounded which is surrounded the earth okay so we can say simply our atmosphere is being protected uh, protecting by this magnetosphere only okay and coming to the next uh, two more spheres, homosphere and heterosphere. If it is, uh, uh, if you talk about only troposphere, stratosphere, and mesosphere, then those three uh, spheres or those three layers comes under the homosphere, and further layers comes under the heterospheres. The atmosphere above the homosphere comes under the heterosphere. You can see in a image very clearly. So this is, uh, guys, this is all about the vertical structure of the atmosphere. Uh, I hope you uh, explain you as a uh, understandable uh, if you really enjoy this class and if it is really useful to you you just share this information to your friends thank you